Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Cadre Concept. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, and I'm here with your host, Shane McGraw. Shane McGraw, hello there. What's the good word, Mr. The, Chris Angel? The good word, yes. Well, I, w- would you just do your um, <laughs> your gamma ray poisoning, your incredible Hulk hands for a minute? Like, if people are watching this. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. You can see I'm his green. It. I feel like I could switch my background and go, what if <laughs> I went with this one? Let's see. Let me see the, uh, oh, outer space. Yes, that's very, can... that might stop the scroll as people are watching this on Facebook. They might stop scrolling and really want to check in. <laughs> anyway. I, we'll around. I may randomly switch it. Can I, can I leave it, the door open for random? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, let's, you know, it's soup du jour. It's like the background of the day. So yeah, I don't have people... friends. So this is how I, this is how I entertain myself. <laughs> I'm sure this is connected to the Condre concept somehow. I, yeah. What I want to say leading out of the gate here in this episode is we're talking about the triangle of trust. So triangle of trust, what does that mean? How is that connected to the Condre concept? Well, I think, you know, uh, the Condre concept in its purest form is about having authentic relationships with other people. That's, that's what a Condre is. And mm-hmm. um, remember, we're teaching you how to have a, a million dollar network in the cadre mm-hmm. concept. It's about the people you know, not about um, all that other crap that people want to sell. It's not true. I right. love this little. I know, right? I know. I know. Uh, that's right. We'll, we'll own it. Um, <laughs> so the triangle of trust, how, how, how does one, obviously at the center of this triangle. So if you picture a triangle, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you got three accesses and in the middle, you're going to put the word trust. So if you're, if you're the note taken type, I would strongly suggest you draw yourself a triangle, put the word trust in there and so I think before you can yeah. go into the trust triangle, you need to understand what is trust mm. in its purest form. You know, what makes you trust another person and mm-hmm. what are some attributes and qualities that you have inside of you? Uh, you know, every one of us were designed to be in healthy relationships. Mm. We are. I mean, we're sloppy people. We're messy people. And I think the biggest you know, misnomer, the biggest misconception that we have is that the goal is to be perfect. Mm. You know, it's, and it's to portray that, especially social media world. It's always... Uh, you know, let's only take pictures, let's edit only pictures that make a social media, the ones that have been edited and the ones that have been, you know, oh, wrong angle, wrong light. But there's, there's not a lot of authenticity. And I think we start to build this, this idea that um, authenticity is, is cooked. I think it's, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of crap. And that we're not, <laughs> we got to be someone we're not right, to be liked. Right. And I, I would argue that I, in my time, I've learned that that's absolutely the opposite. If you spend so much time trying to be something, no one really, I always, I think all things people, business can be brought back to uh, dating and the opposite sexes because I just think it's totally there. But, you know, mm-hmm. my biggest attraction when like to my wife, what attracts me the most about her mm-hmm. is that she, uh, she doesn't give a crap if I like her or not. She's just, she does her own thing. Mm-hmm. She owns her own space and it's, it's attractive that she, that she's just owns her own story. You know, she, she's not needing me to define her character or to tell her if she's good or pretty or she just kind of owns it. And I think the more, the more that she owns it, the more I respect her and the authenticity is, is it. So how does trust come from authenticity? And I think that's what we got to talk about a little bit. Dude, let trust. me, hang on. I just, let me pause on that because I feel like what you're hitting on is super important. I, f- <clears throat> I think um, owning your space, I love the way you say that, like owning your space is, mm. is the thing that um, when I meet somebody else and they own their space and they don't, they don't give a crap about what I think, super attractive in business. Like those, those are the kind of people I want to partner with. Those are the kind of people I want to connect with and have conversations with. But I think there's a lot of, um, I'm just curious from where you sit and maybe even your own story, where, where we sabotage that, like what, what gets in the way of us owning our own space? Well, you know, one of my goals for this podcast is that I'm going to tell my story with authenticity. So <laughs> it's going to have to be. Some, some okay. Confidence. So nice. I have been successful for all intents and purposes for pretty much my whole life. Whenever I choose to do something, I've done well at it. Um, not to say that I haven't messed it up and had to rebuild it a whole bunch of times, but I've stayed the course. I, I, I get up and I keep trying. And I yeah. think that that's a unique thing. But throughout the process, you know, you learn some lessons about, um, kind of doing things. And for me, my story, it always brings me back to like this trust thing. Like what is trust and what is authenticity and what is it about that, that we, that I need to learn about me. So I came to this thought process, this cadre concept, because I screwed it up a lot beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
in order to do what I've done, I've had to build teams. So I've had lots of people come and join my team over the years, some of them talented, some of them uh, raw that had never been in the industry and I, I was able to teach them it. Some of them that had been in the industry longer than me and I was able to learn from them. And you know, you, in, you inherit, I always say that the best person to hire in the mortgage process to work for you is that, that chain smoking old grumpy lady because she's been around forever and she knows what it's at and she'll tell you times of not using a Mac in my day, we didn't even use the computer, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but they, like know, they know so much they don't even know what they know, right? right, right. But at the same time, they bring a culture to, with them. And so you have to kind of fight that. But um, for me, I learned uh, a lot about trust, you know, having your yes be your yes and your no be your no and mm -hmm. um, falsely, you know, selling people what they want instead of who you are. You know, mm -hmm. that's a faulty foundation. So you, you go into a relationship trying to be someone you're not. We all know mm -hmm. that eventually you're going to be who you are. And then, you know, you may have misled that person or, or went after that person for the, with the wrong, you know, selling right. the wrong product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've hit my head up on a lot of walls. I, so, you know, the trick to sales, which is what this podcast is really about is, you know, going out and selling your authentic mission and your, 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 your person and realizing that there's lots of people who you're not going to work with and there's lots of people who you will, but you're definitely not going to have any fun selling someone who's not you. Like if you're, if you're leading, if you're going out and you're putting on a hat that says, this is who I am, but that's not who you are. It's yeah. going to be a short lived relationship. Trust won't be authentic. So do you, do that's so good because I'm, I, I, as, as I hear that, I'm like, that's the, that's what's missing, right? Is I think for a lot of people, it's self-awareness, right? Yeah. You can't, uh, once you find self-awareness, then you can actually say like, I don't have to sell out. Like, and I don't have to read a book and be like, oh, well, this book knows more than I do about me. You just, you just go like, this is how the book fits me, right? Like uh, yeah. man, uh, Sabbath was made for the man, not man for the Sabbath. And I think a lot of times what happens is people read books and they start to like think the book knows more than they do. And so they, we start to bend and twist trying to fit inside of some other thing, right? Think as if it were made, as if we were made for, for the model, not the model made for us. Do you know what I mean? Oh man, I can resonate with that. You know, I've, I've consumed more books than any human mm -hmm. uh, yeah. should, you know, well, half of every book I, you could possibly imagine, right? Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you read these books with like this filter of like, how do I fit into it? Right. Or how does it fit into me? And you, you try to figure out how to like assimilate to it, you know, cause we're all mm -hmm. selfish beings in our nature. We're thinking about our story. Yeah. Everything's about ourselves. And so how do we become arrows out and mm -hmm. you know, start to learn how to take data in and not define ourselves with it, but to sharpen ourselves with it. It's kind of a, yeah. there's, there's, I don't know how to put it to words that makes it simple, but at some point yeah. you got to stop reading to be better and start reading to bring out your authentic nature. Yes. Learn, you know, yes. there's going to be certain things you're going to pick up as you go. Mm -hmm. And those things are going to, um, they're just going to be natural and organic and you're going to be able to go, okay, yeah, I can put that in my pocket. I can use that. Right. Uh, but yeah. it's adding to your story, not recreating your story and not finding yes. you broken all the time. Dude, this is so good. This is, this is the heart in this, in the middle of this triangle where the word says trust underneath tr the word trust is this self-awareness of owning your space and who you are. Love this. This right. is so good. Yeah. And so we're going we're gonna to unpack in the coming you know, weeks and months inside of this Cadre concept, the idea of building mm. a list of people. At some point, you have to go out and be proactive. That's the way the Cadre concept works. Is you, mm. you can only spend so much of your time trying to be this worthy person to sell. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you need to go sell authentic, authentic. Here's where I am. Here's what I'm not. You know, I, I think I can help you here. Let's work together here. Let's mm. not work together over here. You know, like there's like, I am just round of the quarter. I'm just about ready to be 15 years married. Mm. I think just now I'm starting to understand marriage. Mm. I don't think I got it, but mm. you know, I, I got 15 years of, 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 of banging my head against the wall learning. So I could speak to it now. I could give some lessons to people who are, haven't been as married as long as me. And I could say, Hey, what I'm noticing is like someone, Oh, my husband, he does this, this, and this. I'm like, yeah, I was there. I can relate to that. Like mm. I was there. It's not that I had it, not that I did it perfectly when I was there. I just, I can understand your story now. Yeah, right. You know, so that's, so this trust thing, going back to the word trust, yep. I implore each of you to write that word down and try to come up with what you believe trust is to you. What are some attributes of mm -hmm. someone that you would trust? Right. And what are some attributes that you can embody being trust? What makes you trustworthy? What is, you know, what's led you to this moment where you're trustworthy? Mm -hmm. Like I know for me, I grew up in a really tough upbringing, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, People genuinely caring about me and not leaving and not just using me for what they can get and taking off, right. that's become something that's a really part of how I filter trust. 
And one of the reasons why I trust my wife so much is because she said to me, Shane, I'm going to be here tomorrow. I'm never leaving. Like mm-hmm. this is going to last forever. And she's shown me mm-hmm. through the years that she's trustworthy, that I can, tr- I can count on her to do that. Yeah. So trust is big part. If you want to be a good at sales, know yourself first because you can't sell broken. You have yeah. to sell authentic. And trust is going out and telling people like, and they're like, hey, can you give me this? And you said, no, I can't. I can't, I can't give you that in our relationship. Is that, is that a deal breaker? Mm-hmm. That's you know? good. Yeah, I love that. Well, dude, keep going on the, on the triangle because I, I love, I mean, you can tell how much depth there is to this already. So oh, yeah. keep going. Like we got trust in the middle. What, complete the triangle for me. Okay, so here's the concept around this trust triangle. And this, in, in its purity, this is the cadre concept as a whole. Mm-hmm. So the first thing you ask yourself is, um, if you picture the triangle, you got, you know, let's just say the base of the triangle has you and me and you, Chris. So Chris, you're on one side, I'm on the other side. And okay. we're solving for X, which is the top of this triangle. And so, you know, what I like about Chris is Chris is, uh, he's a champion of helping other people tell their story. That's what he does, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So I have a story that I want to tell. And so Chris and I have partnered so that he's helping me tell my story. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's awesome. Now, I, because I'm on this wavelength, have you ever heard of the reticular reactivator, Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's this really cool, powerful thing where if you, if you, you, know, if you ask yourself, what car, did I, what car do I drive? What color is it? And then you realize I see that car everywhere I go. Mm-hmm. But before you bought the car, before it was relevant to you, you didn't see it, right? Right. Right. Something happens with your mind when you give yourself permission to see something, you mm-hmm. also get to see it. Like what you focus on becomes your reality, right? Yeah. If you drive a truck, you think everybody drives trucks because that's what you notice. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it works. So the stress triangle is if I go out into the world to be a friend, right? To go make friends and to go be a good friend to others, I will find friends mm-hmm. because I'm looking yeah. for it. Right. Right. So this stress triangle in its purest form is, is if I care about Chris and Chris and I have an authentic trust-based relationship, it's easy for me to run into people who Chris could help them and they could use Chris's help. It's a natural thing. We are connectors at our purest form. We know that yeah. connection is the lifeblood of relationship. Mm-hmm. If you, if you and I, if you and I are friends, but we don't share that friendship with others, mm-hmm. our friendship isn't, we're not solving anything. We're not doing anything together. So it's, it's not good enough. Mm-hmm. So the stress triangle, mm-hmm. what I like about the trust triangle is, is it's easy for me to connect you with someone that you don't know that I know. And I, tr- I have that trust relationship with, and it's easy for them to receive the referral or introduction from you because why would you, why would I not like you? And why would my friend not like you? Because I like yeah. you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know it seems so simple and it is, but the fact is we, we muddle this badly. We muddle it badly. We're running around trying to be not our, trying to be the best version of ourselves. Right. But we're trying to be the best version of someone else that we can be instead of ourselves. Yeah. And then we yeah. try to connect that way. So, Assuming we have this thing, me and you are in good, me and this buddy is good. Now we need to connect it via the trust triangle. The trust triangle works like this. You're an extension of me. And in order for me to put my word, my confidence in you and pass that to your friend, I need to know that you're going to, you're going to honor that. Mm-hmm. So I might set up a catalyst thing where, Hey, let's you, me and this, my friend go out to lunch, mm-hmm. go out at breakfast. So the other day I took this gal named Renee and she's a sweetie pie. She's a big president of a bank. I've known her forever. She used to work at the local credit union here and I introduced, wanted her to, wanted to introduce her to my sales rep that sells my insurance. Mm-hmm. Her name's Kristen. She's amazing. You guys will get to meet her. I'm sure. I'm sure. And she's really good at connecting. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I schedule this breakfast. We all go out to breakfast. Um, I basically do a little commercial for each of you. Hey, Renee, I just really had to have you meet Kristen because here's why. And then, Hey, Kristen, here's why I wanted you to meet Renee. This is what I love about her. So this is the trust things that I love about these people. And I wanted you guys to connect. And then literally they got to talking and before you know it, because I know them, yeah. I was able to go, Hey guys, I got to leave. And they stayed back for another half hour and talked about canning and doing all this stuff. And then sure enough, within a couple hours, we had two referrals from Renee already. Wow. You know, and we were able to help her, but it wasn't coming from like a sales pitch where we tried to solve things or it was just, Hey, you know, you're on a mission. I'm on a mission. Let's connect and see if we can help each other. And then the business followed it, but the relationship went first. And now I hear that next week they're going to go do canning together. <laughs> nice. I love that. So I, one of the big things I used to hear and what you said was, you know, the relationship comes first. I think it's easy <clears throat> in uh, it, partly in, in our desire for immediate results to just try to shortcut relationship for the result, right? For the transaction, for the sale. And then I also think because of social media and other things where we see all of these, you know, like Facebook ads and stuff where we try to sell digitally without relationship um, that we're, 
this is why I think we're messing it up. Like we're hitting our head against the wall, forgetting that we as humans are wired for connection. And we see all these like Facebook ads about, oh, you know, you can 10X your business overnight with all these great like products and services and packages and programs and whatever. And so we try it, hoping that there's a shortcut in there somewhere, only to be disappointed when it doesn't produce the result. Does that, I mean, have you seen that? Is that just me? Does anything I just said make sense? I think our community is anemic when it comes to relationship, Chris. I yeah, mean, yeah. I couldn't yeah. agree with you more. It's just yeah, such a big concept. I think about like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a dad. And mm -hmm. I think about my kids and kind of things that they're going through with their friendships. And, you know, so-and-so said this and so-and-so said this. And I mean, we're, we're hard on each other. There's no doubt about that. We're hard on each other. Mm -hmm. So how do we mm -hmm. take this kind of, um, mm -hmm. this challenging dynamic of being in the people business where we're, you know, if you don't know this, if you're listening to this podcast, you're in the people business because, right. you know, my wife only stays around because I, I offer her value. You know, I, right. I, right. we're doing life together. My kids are my people. My friends are my people. You know, the people, the checkout line, we're in the people business. Right. So like the greatest gift you can give yourself is learning how to understand that dynamic. Yeah. And I believe trust, mm -hmm. high level of trust is the goal. And from there, that's the roots of, that's the foundation of the house. Dude. So before you can start calling on people and trying to build sales and all that stuff, you got to recognize, am I trustworthy? You got to do the work here mm -hmm. and you got to know what that looks like. And then you got to know when you see it. So if I go yeah. on a meeting, I always call to talk about the 10, three, one philosophy. So you need to go on 10 meetings to find three people that you really connect with to find one that you're going to work with. Mm. People think Dude. they can go on 10 meetings and have 10 relationships. I know. Yes. That's so good. Even. Yeah. You know, so Dude. I'm a big fan of like Dude. slowing down, trusting the process of being in a people business, recognizing yep. that if forcing a relationship with someone for, for gain will only lead in nonsense. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't prosper. So this trust triangle thing is a big deal. Um, I could literally talk about this for months and we can come up with different ways to look at it. Yep. And, but the roots are is, um, are we unified in a mission? I think that's where it starts to start taking shape. So if you and me are going to work together, Chris, we have to have a common goal and it can't be to make money. It can't be surface stuff. It has to have some depth to it. Yeah, we can do surface relationship for a season, mm -hmm. but uh, the next guy can come right along behind you and offer a better surface relationship. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the shiny, shiny object process happens, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we break yeah. out of that? How do yeah. we break out of that? So good. I think we seek to understand. So if, if I'm, if I'm talking about the, you know, some of the takeaways from a trust triangle, like, you know, the whys and the hows, yeah. seek first to understand. So then make that your first note, make seek first to understand. So you had to, you got to go into a meeting and you got to get to know them. So what I always say is you should never make your first meeting with a person ever more than 15, 20 minutes ever, hmm. because it does two things for you. One, it allows you to get out in 15, 20 minutes if they're not the right people. Right. You know, your time yep. is valuable. You only have so much of it. You got to, you know, don't force something. And then also it allows you to get in and learn enough without, and then think about what you learned and decide if you want to meet them again. Right. Cause it's not, so what I do, you get to know them. So you got to be the power, you know, you've all, everybody's heard this in sales, but are you asking lots of questions? You know, the mouth that runs doesn't learn anything, you know, mm -hmm. two ears and one mouth, right. You're supposed to listen twice as much as you talk. Yeah. I know I struggle with that cause I'm a talker by nature. You're a great listener too, though. Like you, you know, like we've had these conversations. You, we yeah. did this. Like, and we're not even in the same city, right? So, which is just testament to this works. Uh, doesn't have. This isn't a local thing. This can be a anywhere thing. But you and I had a conversation on the phone, probably 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And then we had follow up conversations. Now we walk the dog together, right, on the phone. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> this morning a little bit. Yeah, but that's the thing, though, is having. You're right. Like it's. But you're a great listener, and that's really important because I felt. In the, in the world of the trust triangle, most people don't listen. And as you were listening, I was like, okay, he's giving me some runway to keep, to keep talking. And it's in interesting. That, when you were talking, you kept yeah. going, well, you know, I probably, probably over talked that or <laughs> right. you, you were questioning whether or not I wanted to be authentic and actually hear the answer. Right. Because right? I always wonder, like, do I, I'm used to getting cut off. So I'm like, then I'm like, oh, well, he's letting me go longer. I'm like, is he in this conversation? I was testing. Yeah. I was testing. Yeah, I was. It wasn't self-deprecating. I know I have good things to say, but I'm always right. like, ah, are they are they really in this conversation? And so I'm like, hey, dude, I talk too long, like, you know. And and you're like, no, keep going. And I'm like, okay, well, that builds trust. 
I know for me as being a communicator, um, yeah. I question myself a lot like that too. Mm -hmm. I'll be yeah. in conversations and I'll feel like, oh, I'm saying too much. I'm saying too much. Maybe I'm forcing it. Maybe, maybe I should stop giving six examples to explain one thing. You know? yeah. um, and what I found is that makes me authentic. People, you know, people come alongside of me, whether or not they totally want to be around me for long periods of time or not. Maybe I, yeah. maybe I over talk sometimes, but they know that when I'm speaking to them, I'm coming from my heart and I'm actually trying to listen. Mm -hmm. And I, that's a, that's a yeah. learned that's a learned thing. Yeah. Like when I called you and talked to you, I actually started out with a question. I wanted to seek to understand you. Mm -hmm. Remember the first question I had was Chris, you know, I'm excited to do all this stuff with you, but I just want to get to know you more like you, Chris, you know, what led you to this point? Why are you doing what you're doing? Right. And it's because I, I earnestly wanted to know that. Yeah. So the trust triangle starts with an earnest desire to know other people's story. That's a great question, by the way. I mean, those of you listening, you're like, well, okay, I, I like this idea. How do I start that conversation? Well, that's just, why do you do what you do? And then I would imagine, I mean, I would be listening from a place of character. Like what is, what, like, what's, can I sense their heart in it? Right. Yeah, do they seem that's where trust comes, yeah. Do they seem clear? Do they seem, do they, do they have depth? Um, that's what I would be listening for. Is that sort of what you listen for when you ask that question? Yeah. Um, you know, we all have sloppy stories. You know, I, I remember when I was, I served in my youth group for about 10 years and uh, man, if you don't know how to love people, go love some kids. You'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was really good. They'll test you and grow you. Yeah. Um, and we did a survey. We, we, we challenged all of our kids to take a survey back to their school and ask tough questions like, you know, anonymous, like what age were you when you had sex? Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. how much pressure do you have to do drugs? Like, mm -hmm. You know, these tough questions, right? And what we found was, you know, we asked questions like, uh, are you, is your parents divorced? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been molested? Mm. Like tough questions, right? Tough yeah, those questions. are tough questions. Yeah. So what we found out is almost everybody has shitty stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yeah. do. They have tough stories where, you know, maybe their parents were functional, but their uncle wasn't a great guy. You know, there's a lot of, we hurt each other a lot in this world. So mm. you could probably safe to say that when you're standing in the checkout line, the people in the front of you and back of you, their stories are significant. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you ever heard of a book, How to Make Friends and Influence People? Yeah. By Dale Carnegie? Oh, yep. it's my book. Yeah. I mean, I've probably mm -hmm. read it 50 times. It's the best mm -hmm. treadmill book you can ever get. <laughs> Even, and if you like wisdom, like the guy reading it, that, that Dale, I mean, it, it, it's an old man. Like you feel like yeah. you're just hanging out with grandpa. Like, right. just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He says it's one of the things, if, if you two were like them, if you two had been through what they've been through, if you two saw the world that they saw, you two may act the same way they do. Mm. And it just allows you to kind of make allowances for people to do what they do and you don't have to be offended by it. Right. You could just make, you could just understand it. So um, this mm. trust thing. So I want to leave you with a couple of tools in yep. this trust thing, at least um, as I see them. Yep. So I think the first thing you do if you're making your list is have an earnest desire to understand other people's story. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be really good at asking lots of questions. So that brings you to the second piece is ask lots of questions and then truly listen. And if I were you, if I'm sitting in a business meeting at any time, I got my notebook and a pen and I say it out loud. Hey, do you mind if I take notes? I genuinely want to learn you know, more about your story. Mm -hmm. People are like, okay, how many, how, when's the last time someone took notes when you were talking? Right. Yeah. And listened with that intentionally. And then when you're taking notes, what happens is you're trying to keep up, right? You're keeping the, the tempo and then you literally got to go, hold on, can you say that again? That was good. I want to make sure I get it down. Mm -hmm. And they're going, people don't know how to receive that because they're not used to having authentic conversations. Mm -hmm. Well, then at the end of that meeting, you could say, you have a fork in the road, right? You can say, you know, Johnny, um, you know, you referred to me by Sarah. So I, of course, I already like you. But now that I've gotten to know you, you seem like a really cool guy. And I got to know more about you. What do you think we, about me and you meeting again in a week, maybe same time, same place, same location. And I'd like to get to know you more. I got some more questions. How yeah. many times the last person that earnestly sought you out like that mm -hmm. just right. doesn't happen. Right. Well, what happens is I find if you have two of those meetings where you're truly seeking to understand someone, mm -hmm. you're going to, two things are going to happen. A, you're going to know if they're the kind of person that you can do mission with, mm -hmm. that you can get on the same page and you guys can charge the hill together because you know, your stories unite. Right. And, and B, you're going to know why you're on that mission together. Yeah. Well, if you know someone's why now you can be in authentic relationship with them. Yeah. And then when I call John and I say, John, you got to meet my buddy, Chris Angel. He does this, this, and this. Here's what I love about him. Mm -hmm. uh, can I connect you to? He's going to say, wait a minute. This guy took the time to know who I was. Mm. He took the time to understand why I am the way I am. And he thinks that this person could help me reach my you know, 
get to the next level? Yeah. Of course he's going to say yes. I mean, my batting average on referrals is like a thousand percent. Wow. That's and then amazing. of course there's process yeah. of how you would refer someone. Yeah. So this triangle of trust, are you worthy of being trusted? Yeah. And what is it that you're looking for in others that you would find as characteristics that are trust, trustworthy? That's so good. So good, man. This, listen, listen, you, you guys listen to this, like, this is it. You get more and more of this, like every episode, this is like, we keep diving into the cadre concept. And I love how this is connected to humanity. Like it's not about, um, you know, ads mm-hmm. and gimmicks and things. This is about how we are wired as humans. You know, it's a human connection thing. I love this, man. This is so good, Shane. Well, let me, let's wrap with this. I want to, um, people are going to be like, I want to know more about this, right? They're, whether it's connecting with you, learning from you, whatever, how, where can people go to kind of sink their teeth into some more? Well, like I said, this whole podcast thing is in a beta form, right? We're, we're, yeah. we're kind of, we've built a lot of stuff over our time, Yeah. but we're just now saying, Hey world, we have something to share and you know, ask us about it. So we're a little in the, you know, we'll always be chasing our tail in this. I'm thinking, but if you go to the cadre concept, cadreconcept.com, you can kind of see our little website. It's, it's, we're trying and we're going to start. Our goal is, is we're going to post our podcast there. We're going to post things that you can download and take. We're going to have the ability to ask questions and get involved, join our, you know, social media community, that kind of thing. But um, ultimately our goal is to, to through this year of, of just kind of pack unpacking this philosophy of the cadre concept, which I was led to through a tough story. Right. Yeah. You know, Cause I, yeah. I made some mistakes and, had some wins um, mm-hmm. is in a year or so to be able to say, Hey guys, we have a formula and we want, we want to partner with you and, and, mm-hmm. and have you on as our students. Mm-hmm. We built a, um, a product called the impact tracker mm-hmm. because we believe if you go out into the world to impact people, you know, now you're, you're at least you got your arrows in the right direction. You know, you, you, you got your suitcase packed and your head on the right plane. Um, Cause if you're trying to go out there and, you know, get money from people tracker, right. Good luck with that. Yeah. So this impact tracker, we, we have a formulated system that's a 52 week like business plan that we help you put together. And then at this, the practices, the daily disciplines are the same. It's just the why your why is different. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Right. So we have this system that we, 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 we build groups, we build pods of five and we let you come on board and we basically have this pod of five work together and we give you a playbook and then we all kind of hold each other accountable and do life together. And our goal is, is that, you know, we'll just keep building these. And as we get better, we'll um, open the doors for more. So right now we're taking on five more students. That's it. Mm. And then we already have five. So that's all we have. And then we'll just keep taking on five at a time until we feel like we can't serve them or right. we'll open the door when we can. So to sort of connect with that, it's the cadre concept.com or is it just, just cadre? Just cadre concept. Yep. Yeah dot com perfect okay cadre concept dot com perfect good stuff shane well thanks for your time this this episode uh i look forward to our next conversation um uh in our next episode can't wait for that so until then (laughs) and you and your green gamma radiation hands uh we'll we'll see you you next time thanks man appreciate it chris yeah